nothing to do with your degree yes, sir. or your rank in society. Got nothing to do with your genealogy. Got nothing to do with your finances. But I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, God is able. If you know he's able, we ought to put our hands together. Scripture here from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, 20th chapter. We're going to read 22 through uh, 28. When I was young, I could read this small print. <laughs> and now we're going to have somebody else to read it. Stand up and read it. Stephen? 20th chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And we're going to read down to the 28th. Read 28. 22 through 28. <clears throat> Let me stand for the reading of the word. Give honor to the honor of you, my Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Ministers and pastors and saints, deacons, friends, God bless you this evening. Everybody ready to praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Song said he's able, he's truly able. I'm looking at a, I'm looking at a, looking at a testimony myself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. I declare him free. I was a, a child, father gave up on him, and I was afraid to become a father, but he's able. Amen. 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 Am
Hold on. In spite of the heart, you have to be at least my age to know who these people are. So if I'm calling off names that you've never heard, don't worry about it. But I remember how they took us and taught us the ways of the Boy Scouts and Brother Brooks from another church. They came together to teach us how to be better men when we grew up. The church is like that today because when you become a scout, you have to put on your uniform. You have to put on a uniform. And everybody's supposed to have on the same uniform. You also have to have uh, some little tools hanging off your belt. Uh, some little skillets. Little thin skillets. But some little skillets. They teach you that when you go out into the wilderness, you can survive. Because whatever you find, you can just <coughs> fry it in that skillet. I ought to have one or two in here, people old as I am. You know what I'm talking about. So there's also another thing hanging on your belt, which is called a canteen. This is where you carry your water. You're not going to survive in the wilderness without the holy water of God. Amen. Did you hear me? Yes. Amen. They're also going to teach you how to prepare for your journey. So the night before, you may have to go ahead and start digging some earthworms. Some worms? Do y'all still call them worms? <laughs> Looking at me like they don't dig earthworms. <laughs> y'all show the other, you're showing up leaning on Kroger's. I know you are. <laughs> but you had to go and dig up your earthworms and put them aside so that you can go fishing the next day. Am I right? That's what we ought to be doing as a church. We ought to be preparing to go fishing. Go ye therefore into all the earth. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, smile every once in a while. <laughs> so we have to prepare ourselves. Then we have to also say the same thing before we go out. So we have to know that we've got our same oath. What we going to do and how we're going to be. Now, I want you to know the Lord has led me to tell you to hold on in spite of difficulties. Difficulties mean something hard to do. It means hardship, stress. It means that most people can hold on when the Sun is shining bright and life is easy. Uh -huh. The health is good. Yeah. When there's no trouble uh -huh. and things are going well with them, you can hold on and rejoice. Uh -huh. But what happens when your life gets cloudy? Uh -huh. Unusual problems arise. Uh -huh. And the pain comes. Sometimes in our body, sometimes in our spirit, Sometimes with one another. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When things go wrong and the winds of trouble blow, well. you have to learn to hold on and 
Know that God is in tune with your trouble. Yeah. 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 Satan is the enemy of the church. Yeah. Yeah. Satan is the enemy of you. Uh -huh. His job is to wreck your life. And make you turn and walk away from the same God that saved you. Amen. Same God that held you close. Amen. The same God that rescued you time after time after time. Amen. Satan is an enemy to the yeah. church. Uh -huh. yeah. Satan don't like you. And you're not supposed to like him. That's right. That's right. You have to hold on. That means... Not letting go. You have to persevere. Have a spirit of steadfastness. That's what you have to do. Yeah. So the question comes up. Preacher, how big should a Christian be? <laughs> Christian has to be big enough not to quit. When things are not going your way. Yeah. Right, right, right. Some kind of way we have to learn to lean on God. Uh -huh. Lean on me. So, preacher, what about when you've been lied on? Well, Because there's some liars that come to church every Sunday. <laughs> Somebody ought to say amen. amen. There's some liars. There's some people that's designed by God to mistreat you. Yeah. To test you. Just to see what your relationship with God is made of. Well, uh, well. Because if you can't be tested, you won't have a testimony. All right. Now, don't be saying amen when I sit down. <laughs> amen. Amen. I want you to know, I won't be up long. I want to tell you about a fellow by the name of Paul. Uh -huh. Pastor going to tell you about a man named Paul. He was a church fighter. Mm -hmm. You know any church fighters? <laughs> they tell you all the time, they don't need to go in the day. Oh. See, that's, you don't have to be in the flesh, you can be a spirit. Right. That spirit tells you when you have all gotten everything together and you can't find that one shoe, you got a closet full of shoes. <laughs> and you can't find that one stocking. Uh -huh. You can't find that one outfit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That spirit of Satan is telling you, oh, you might as well just go ahead and stay home. It's too late to go now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, but God is watching over you. God is watching over you. He wants to see, will you push for, try, when things are not going your way. Yeah. Yeah. I want to remind you one day that you're going to have to stand before the judgment seat of God. Yeah. It's not just the community that you have to uh, put up and persevere with. You're going to have to stand before a righteous God yeah. who knows all your secrets mm -hmm. and he knows everything about you. He knows every thought that ran through your mind. Oh, yeah. Things that you planned to do that you didn't get an opportunity to do. Things that you did that you should not have done. Yeah. Yeah. Things that you almost did, but you still couldn't carry it out. God is a God. He's a righteous judge. Yeah. Yeah. Now you won't stand before him as a family. Some of us got family Itis. Because the family thinking you're going to stand. I'm standing with my family. I'm going to stand with my granddad. I'm going to stand with no. You're going to stand by yourself. You're going to stand by yourself. You will not stand as a church. You will not stand as a community. You won't stand as a city, a county, a state, nor a country. We'll stand individually. Nobody can stand for you. Yes. Yes. I know sometimes you have uh, things to do at the church and you send somebody to take your place. Mm -hmm. There have been times, uh, Brother Pastor, that I have uh, wanted to send somebody to stand in my place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I wasn't feeling that way. Yeah. 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 I've come through some hard times. Yeah. Yeah. I've just come through 
knowing what it's like to lose somebody. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 49 years and nine months. That's a lot to take away from a man. Yes, yes. 49 years and nine months. Mm. And now I got a big old house and mm. nobody in it but a little four pound yucky uh -huh. with 400 pounds of mouth. Uh -huh. He barked every time the wind blows. So I want you to know that the Lord is still making a change in me. Uh -huh. Anybody ever lost anybody? Yeah. Let me see your hand if you've lost somebody. It's never easy. It's never easy. But there's some things that you have to understand, some things that will be on your record. Folks will not be on your record. They won't have any bearing on what you did to please God. Other people said what they said about you not having any bearing on your record. You know, the devil shows up and he'll use anybody's mouth. He'll use your mouth. Church is full of sinners right now. It's full of sinners right now. From the time we had morning service to the afternoon service, 99% of the church lied, stole, they they sing. They gossip. Yeah, they did. Look at somebody and say, yeah, I did. <laughs> if you got a good attorney, you can say that I'm not going to plead guilty, but I'm going for a plea bargain. There will be no plea bargain. Not when you stand before God. See, because when you stand before God, he knows everything. And sometimes we let other folks influence our actions in the church. We try to do what's right, the Bible way. But some folks are hypocritical. You ever been hypocritical? We hard on hypocrites in the church. Yeah, we are real hard on hypocrites. One of the things that will happen, we'll see somebody going through a hard time in their life and we'll just blast them. Tell everybody we know their business. Yeah. All of a sudden, all you have to do is look, is look in the mirror, and there you are with your business. Uh -huh. You didn't tell anybody your business. Uh -huh. Oh, I have to, I, I'm going to have to need some help. Brother Mike, if you, not Brother Mike sitting right there, he's taping. <laughs> See, I'm going to need some help because I, 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 I'm going to have to fight my way out of Central today. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I hope that you won't put judgment too far into the future. Because all we have is today. My daddy used to tell me all the time, he said, Nelson, yesterday is the past. Yesterday is the past. That's gone. He said, tomorrow is the future. He said, that's yet to come. All we have is today. So whatever love you have to give, whatever love you have to show, show it today. Sometimes wives have husbands, they want, only time they want to show is around Christmas time. Give you something. They'll give you a half a ham. If you love her, give her the whole ham. Same thing with wives. They, you know, it's Valentine's Day. They, here they come. They, you know, fix you some pan of bread. Uh -huh. And they, they didn't watch it. It's dry and crumbled <laughs> Whatever you have to do for somebody, do it today. Amen. Do it today. Now I'm just about finished, but there's one more thing that I have to say. In 2 Timothy, it says that I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. It says, preach the word. Now, that ain't just talking to the preacher. 
He's talking to the whole church. That's, right. That's your job. Yes, sir. Preach the word. Amen. Not just your, what you have to say about it. Not just use the influence that you have. The word of God is our medicine. Yes, sir. That's right. For every ill and hate that we have. And we're going to have some in this battle of life. Oh, yeah. yes. We're going to have some times when we go feeling like we're down and can't get up. Yes. Somebody needs to go to them with the word of God. Yes. And you don't have to put your two cents in. Put Jesus Christ in it. Yes. Give them his word. Yes. And then move on. You must be reminded that the preacher is an important factor. Before the word can be sent, it says, how can they hear without a preacher? Yes. The greatest need for the church today is more true preachers yes, who are divinely called, spiritually prepared, and divinely commissioned. Yes. We are overstocked with makeshift men, please. Right. Counterfeit. Yes, sir. Counterfeit yes. preachers. Yes. Too many people today that are Entertaining us on television and in a lot of our churches. We are falling for the counterfeit. We're falling for it. The word of God is real. Hallelujah. God is my witness. I'm so thankful that I came up in a church oh, where the people rejoiced in the Lord of their salvation. They didn't have fancy cars. They didn't have fancy suits or shoes. I was born in a little coal camp town. Yeah, I was born in a house with no doctor present. Oh, but I want you to know they had a little church where people would gather together. Thank God that they made it another week. That they made it another day. Yeah. I'm talking about people who know God is real. Uh -huh. I want you to know that the same God that guided them all that week is still guiding them today. Yeah. Yeah. I want yeah. you to know that when they went down in the coal mine, to mine coal, they didn't know that they were coming out again. Well, uh, Every day was a test. Every hour was a test. But you have to trust somebody. You may not be able to trust the company that hired you. You may not be able to trust the insurance. They might have insurance. You may not be able to trust even the people that you work with. You have to learn how to trust in God. I wish I had some help in here. I'll tell you. There was a man by the name of Paul who was a church fighter. Yeah. He fought people all of his latter life. He was well educated. He was a well educated, well bribed man. He had all of the right things that a societal man would want. But uh, he was a church fighter. And he was a killer of Christians. But I can tell you that you can run, but you can't hide from God. If God has a call on your life, you can't hide from a just God. Well, one day while he was out, out there uh, riding in his uh, beautiful little chair, I want you to know that God's time had run out for him. I want you to know that he all of a sudden lost his mind. He all of a sudden lost his sight. He became uh, just another disabled man. And he spoke to him and he let him know that I am the Lord thy God. I've got orders for you. I've got news for you. You have been fighting against me and now I'm going to make you just like one of them. Said no matter where you came from, God can change your future. No matter where you're going to, God can change your future. No matter how many degrees that you have, God can teach you something new. I wish I had a witness in there. I said God can teach you something 
something new. Well, when you're sitting there listening to the word of God, I can tell you that I too have been just on the other side, the captain of the devil's army. Have not been a preacher all the days of my life. Even when I was a captain in the devil's army, I would wonder why God would be so good to me. I wonder why we had so many car wrecks and I would still come out of the car wreck. A blessed man. Somebody would say, Skeeter, I don't see how you lived in that car wreck. But I knew way back at my daddy's house. My mama was on her knees. Ah, made a way for me. That has brought me to storm. That has made a way out of no way for me. The Lord has brought me to sickness. The Lord has picked me up, turned me around, made my feet on solid ground. I wish I had some help in here. I say the Lord will make a way for me. I'm a two and I wondered how in the world the Lord brought me through. I want you to know that he labored. He labored. Oh, he labored. He labored, I tell you. I don't know what it's like when my wife had uh, cancer. She had five cancer surgeries in four years. And God would get her up on her feet, yeah. and she'd be walking around after the first surgery. Uh -huh. Then somewhere down the road, she'd yeah, have another diagnosis, yeah. and the cancer had moved to another spot. Then we'd have another surgery, and yeah. we'd pray and pray and pray and have another surgery, and God would raise her up again. Uh -huh. yeah. I want you then she would get up on her feet again, and uh, then she would have another diagnosis. Then they said the cancer had moved to another spot in her body. Well, I want you to know that we kept on praying, in faith believing, doubting nothing. But still you got to trust God when it looks good. 